welcome to Credit Matters TV. Joining me in the Hong Kong studio today is our bank credit analyst, Ryan Zhang, and here's to tell us a little bit about the China shadow banking system. Hi, Ryan. Hi, good morning. Hi. Um, now, uh, shadow banking is a key concern for many people because of the speed of its growth. Can you tell us roughly how big is shadow banking um, in China? Yeah, of course. Uh, we estimate China's shadow banking uh, credits was about 22.9 trillion renminbi or 3.7 trillion US dollar at the end of 2012. Now, to put it in context, uh, that is about 34% of um, the uh, banking sector loans in China or 44% of China's GDP in 2012. Well, talking about speed, um, the Chinese uh, shadow banking market grew very quickly in the past two years at a uh, compound annual rate of 34%. Um, however, it is still in the early stage of development. Uh, and by the same measure, uh, and according to Financial Stability Board, um, the G20 countries and the Eurozone's shadow banking market to GDP was above uh, 110 percent at the end of 2011. Now we've seen a number of different estimates in the market for China's shadow banking market. Can you tell us how does S&P define shadow banking? Yeah, sure. We use the same definition the uh, Financial Stability Board uses. Uh, basically, it defines uh, shadow banking as credit intermediation involving entities and activities outside of regular banking system. Now, in China, we define regular banking system as the central banks and authorized depository institutions. Uh, with that, that means uh, the uh, corporate bond market would be included in this definition of uh, shadow banking. What about the underlying credits? How risky are they? Well, uh, we have uh, quite a different view from a very common perception in the market, uh, which believes uh, all the credits uh, in the shadow banking markets are risky. Uh, in our view, actually, uh, the riskiness of these products largely depends on uh, who are the originators and the reason behind pushing out such products. Now, we reckon that about uh, one third of the uh, products are of risky nature. Uh, those include wealth management products originated by non-banks, um, uh, private lending, and a collective trust program. Now, on the other hand, we think about 20% of the uh, uh, shadow banking market products are of lower risk. Those predominantly are uh, uh, cre uh, products originated by commercial banks. So my last question would be, is shadow banking destabilizing the China financial system? Well, not quite yet. Um, it is because the size of the shadow banking uh, market and the risky part, more importantly, the risky part of the shadow banking market is still uh, relatively modest comparing to the uh, entire financial system. Um, and at the moment, the commercial banks uh, have adequate financial profile to absorb potential losses from these risky activities. Now, having said that, though, um, if the market continue to grow unchecked, uh, it could accumulate risk quickly. Because at this moment, the corporate China uh, leverage level is already quite high. It is difficult to uh, increase leverage uh, productively. Uh, but having said all that, though, uh, we do believe uh, an orderly uh, development of the shadow banking system could be beneficial uh, to the entire financial system. It is because uh, it could lead to a more efficient credit allocation uh, and reduce the government's dominant position uh, in the uh, financial market. Okay, thanks very much, Ryan. Thank you. And thanks for watching Credit Matters TV. We'll see you next time.